What is up, Chubs? What is happening, my Damien? What is up? <laughs> it is your girl, your favorite Chubb, back here. So, Miss Amberlynn Reed didn't drop the video maybe a day or two ago. I held off to watch it. And the video is called Weight Loss Surgery Update. Let's talk mukbangs and feeders vlog. Now, I'm a cut queen. Okay, so there's a lot of her video, which is 18 minutes long, that I will be cutting out. So you'll probably see my little side characters come in. That means I didn't, it was a dry spot and I cut it out. Okay, so, but if you want to see the original video, I will leave it in the description box if you want to check it out for yourself. And we're going to check that out. Now, as me being a weight loss surgery recipient, I know the process in my state is pretty much similar or whatever. It all depends. But I know she saw her dietitian, she saw her um therapist and they both agreed that she can get surgery but i will get more into that once i watch this video now i'm not gonna hold you without further ado let's get into it. now you might hear the fan going on in the background i'm not gonna be sweating like a pig in here so you'll probably hear the fan in the background so let's get into it. Hey, hey, hi, how are you, how are you? So welcome to a new vlog. So today I said in my last vlog how I have a lot of important phone calls to make. So I'm gonna be making those. So the first one is I'm about to call the place where I got my chest x-ray done. Um, I got it done like a week ago. Um, so I'm gonna get my results for that because I'm curious to see what they say. So I'm gonna do that, that's the first thing. Okay, so I called and unfortunately, I have to send an email asking to be part of their portal yeah, to get my results because I you guess have nothing like my chart. they can't tell me over the phone. So no, they I'm going to do that, which I'm doing right now <laughs> on my hair laptop. And then I am going to call um, a lung specialist, which is like a pulmonary. It's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pronounce it, but it's like a pulmonary moment. Uh so, a pulmonologist, um, that, that's red flag number one with her situation with this weight loss surgery. If you are actually going through a bariatric clinic, especially when you have some pre, uh, previous conditions, especially lung and heart, they will refer you to a cardiologist and a pulmonologist because that's part of the process, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. Red flag number one. Call and see if I need a referral. So that's you my next been step. Had that. And the email is sent. So I'm gonna go do so that. So excited. Okay. Another update. Um, I called the lung specialist. You gonna need a referral, and aren't you? I was right. You do need a referral, which I thought. But if I could skip a step or two, see? I'm definitely gonna do that. I know I'm stopping early. This girl loves being on this metro train to anything. If it's her health, anything. She loves being on that metro Amtrak train. She don't like to take her time. She don't like to just go step by step, do what, to make sure the steps is right. She just loves being on that Amtrak train. So I just actually called my primary care doctor and I made an appointment. So I have that set up. This is it is cut, it's not like far away. Um, but I feel like it, it, it's not soon enough for me. Of course not. And so I think that, you know, in a few days I'm going to call and see if there's a closer appointment because I know like people cancel and stuff. Which not they lately. Which do in the past. So I'm definitely going to uh, do that because I just I really want to get this going, get this figured out. I know we tried last year to get it figured out and after tons and tons of tests, we thought we found what was wrong. And oh, turns out... I, I, oh. I heard she's famous for her chokers. <laughs> you know, doctors aren't robots. They're not perfect. They're amazing and they are heroes, but um, we do have And to neither are robots, so. so. It's like staring <laughs> at the sun, but like, but like a dark sun that steals your soul. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Hello, hello. It's been a hot minute since I've talked to y'all, and I. Just she's really fasting. Know that, like, the more I do this fasting thing, the easier it's becoming because sure it I is. haven't eaten in 16 and a half hours. And I feel fine. Like, I don't even feel hungry, like, at all. So, kind of I don't know how long she's been fast, and I haven't really watched and watching that much. That I want to talk to you guys about is, like, Oh, focus, babe. Counting. So, I noticed when I was calorie counting the first oh, God. couple days, um, I, uh, all the food that I'm eating is, like, so filling, and it's, like, nutritious, and it's, it's not a bunch of, like, processed stuff. So I'm finding myself becoming like super full, super fast. And like, I was forcing myself to like reach my calorie goal. Okay. Cause my calorie goal originally was 2000. You, and you're not I supposed to force yourself to reach it. 2000 calories. So I realized that I'm not gonna count calories because 
when you stop all the processed food, like all that processed food has like chemicals that literally set your brain on fire. Like it has been proven. It like I'll stop you right there. Linda, listen. Linda, listen. What you say about anything about nutrition is null and void to your audience. Because ma'am, if you had all this experience with nutrition, we would not be here 500 pounds later. You can't say, I know all these things and then do the opposite. Now she is fasting, but don't want to count calories because she's eating healthier foods. I, I got to get into them because um, the thing about it is I saw one of her when she went to the doctor and they told her to lose four pounds. Well, the dietitian. And basically she just, she didn't lose really any weight. So I'm like, you can't tell anybody this is what you do. And you're 500 pounds. Whatever you say is null and void. So you just got to go for what is right for your life at the moment. Doesn't understand hunger cues, full cues, etc. So by eating all this like raw veggies, especially. She loves like, the extra proteins And just whole foods. Like obviously I'm not perfect. But eating all these things, it definitely helps with like my hunger cues. It helps with my full cues. My brain isn't like on fire because of all the processed food. So it's like I have been forcing myself to eat when I don't want to like force myself to eat. I want to just like listen to my body. So that You're not supposed to. I know I'm stopping. I'm sorry. You're not supposed to force yourself to get to your calorie. That that That's a trigger for binge eating. You're not supposed to. If you're finished, when, just you're done. Don't force yourself to eat. And she just get, she got this professor hat. It's like you took a professor off the street and say took a straight off the street and say hey you want to be a professor sure just give me a pamphlet and i, I get it going that, that's what she sound like a professor off the streets not just you know mm. this is me saying that i am no longer counting calories because it's just it doesn't make sense this it I'm does make sense but whatever well, girl in any sort of way I do want to say one more thing before I end this clip. I'm not counting calories, but I am paying attention to them. That and Feline even asked me the other night. She was like, what is like the difference? But I think she understands now too. It's like, say I'm having steak. I want to look at the calories and I want to know how many calories are in a serving because that's a good example of like so that's county a ton of calories it's still county so much like higher in calories versus like chicken or tilapia especially so it's like paying attention and like counting them are two different things but yeah I have no to it's still that. county because you're still concerned about what it. is going into my body and stuff like that and no way am i gonna overdo it oh, especially baby. because i'm eating so many like whole foods and things that just make me feel better okay you guys so i have a grocery haul um this is just some chicken thighs and then two things of ground turkey, some tostadas, two things of traditional refried beans. Mm. Got some <clears throat> carrots here, dipped them in my mustard and cottage cheese. <laughs> I've been really liking potato stir fry. She's dipping carrots and mustard and cottage cheese. What did I miss? I, I missed carrots and mustard and cottage cheese. What did I miss? I missed something. That don't sound real. That don't sound good. I type things and a serving is only 70 calories. I do like those potatoes. So depending on how hungry I am, I'll usually have a serving or like a serving and a half. So I just got two bags of those. And I wanted to try some mini peppers. They're just regular peppers. Those are decent. Mustard. I feel like it honestly sounds so Th good. This sounds gross. Uh, got some ricotta cheese, some garlic, sriracha, some uh, sugar free salted caramel oh, syrup. God. And then over here is some stuff some organic coconut unsweetened uh, milk, some scallions. She love those scallions. Egg. Broccoli. Uh, yeah, that's just Feline's trash. I was like, wait a minute, I don't remember getting this. <laughs> um, Feline is gonna be making some jumbo shell pasta, so she got some live -in chef. and some sauce. So some of this is Feline's. Like when I do the grocery hauls, um, we do eat kind of differently. You, so you when think? I do the grocery hauls, I also show some of the things that she got as well. Okay, you guys. So I'm about to end my fast at 18 hours. 18 hours. Which, okay, I have I gotten up to 20. Happened, but it Only happened, I, was I just sleep. wasn't feeling that hungry. So here is my food. Let's eat. Wait, that plate is so random. All of that. She, who, oh, leave it up to her to make a plate where 
nothing goes together. Nothing goes together. Is that the mustard and cottage cheese she's talking about? And it's together? Nothing goes together on this plate. Like, she... Nothing on this plate goes together. She just be... Maybe leave the cooking up to Feline. We're going to do a little taste test. Oh, no. the sweet pepper. Oh, my God. I cut God. up, too, because I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Um, oh, my stomach. With the cottage hurt. cheese and mustard. So, let's try it. I thought she wasn't doing this. Oh, oh shut up, Feline. I'm going to end up calling her Flavor Flavor because she be hyping her up <laughs> at the wrong time. Yeah. That's good. I thought she wasn't going to do this anymore. Uh, Eat on camera. I made a stir fry and I had baby corn in it. And I had leftover baby corn. This this plate is I'm so random. It's the cottage cheese and mustard. So let's give that a that go. That sounds so gross. I thought she wasn't going to eat on camera anymore like this. Mm-hmm. No. No, it's not. That's good too. <laughs> and I see I now realized, one speckle of seasoning. I like, fruit with this. Like half of an apple or some strawberries. I forgot. That's okay though. I right, will so murder you through I'm this laptop if you put strawberries. Spirit. Oh my god. Asparagus. Raw asparagus. I thought she wasn't going to eat on camera anymore. I thought she wasn't going to eat on camera. What are we doing here? And then it's just random ass shit on a plate. And she's dipping it in mustard and cottage cheese. I don't see not one pepper flake or nothing. It's just raw vegetables and whatever the poopy, um, the poopies on the plate and mustard and cottage cheese. It's so random. It's so random. Radish. It's this is not attractive, girl. Celery. Oh my gosh, she's just grabbing Green stuff out the fridge. What? Just put the Good whole one. damn thing. Th this plate is so random. I ain't getting triggered. That's what that is. All right. So I think it's time. Let's talk about weight loss. Oh, surgery. here we go. So I finished my 12 sessions. I was approved by my therapist. I then was approved by my dietitian. I'm gonna get, and my next step I'm gonna get was to, that. to meet with the surgeon mm -hmm. to talk over everything that I've done and to set a surgery date. I would say it's been over a month where I have felt disconnected. From I feel it was surgery. longer than that. Oh, like I wasn't ready. And. There is a lot of personal reasons why I chose this decision. Oh, I bet it was. I have chosen to postpone weight loss surgery. I know there's a lot of people saying that I was not approved or I was like declined. That is not true. I emailed my dietitian. Okay. I I'm gonna watch the rest of this video. Now the rest of the video, if this is random, I'm, it, I will probably stop after this conversation, but I'm gonna get into my reasoning of how I feel, of how I think this is going right now, but I'm going to get into my reasoning of how I, how my, what I come to the conclusion with it. So once this ending and if the, the, if the rest of it is random, you're not going to see the rest of it. So we're going to continue with this conversation. I felt really bad. I explained the situation I'm in, you know, the decision I made for myself. And I felt bad because my dietitian replied and thought it was something to do with their clinic. So she like gave me the number to call like the clinics, like complaint honcho, line, for the lack of a better word Com here. Complaint um, line. Because she felt like maybe it was something they did. So, you know, if I wanted to tell them like my experience, like what they could fix and stuff like that. And I was like, no, it's something y'all did. You know, it's just a decision that I, need for myself and made for myself there's a lot of personal reasons that made me come up with this decision oh. i'm not saying that weight loss surgery is never going to happen it i'm simply won't. saying that it is postponed for now my dietitian said that even though i have decided to postpone it that i'm still their patient that she will always be there for me they will always be there for me sure whatever help i need whatever guidance i need and i just appreciated that so much i was very scared to let them know about my de my decision like even now i'm just like assembling my words because i feel so bad about the whole thing like i was putting a lot of a lot of hard work trying to get the surgery and who are you i know On that that train. a lot of you wanted me to get it but i realized are we not like, taking accountability gut, you blame your there audience. was a lot of things telling me not to do it mm -mm. And for a minute there you're grown as well i stopped thinking of myself and i was like thinking of everyone else and no you wasn't you Everyone wants me to be a success story, People. and I get that. Oh my god. But going under for surgery is very scary at my size. And minus the other personal reasons why I've chosen not to have weight loss surgery right now, I think the reasons that I am displaying right now, I feel like that is enough. And I feel like I should be validated in the way that I feel. Hopefully my words will not be dismissed. I feel like that's definitely gonna happen, but I, I finally feel better again. Oh, I you. feel like me again. I am able to 
see a bright future regardless regardless she's I not she's, she's regardless. not gonna get it like you guys see that honestly weirdly enough i haven't ate this healthy in a very long time let's just say years <laughs> like the way that i'm currently eating now i haven't ate this healthy in years and that is even after saying that i am not ready for weight loss surgery so i just wanted everyone to hear that from my mouth this literally had nothing to do with being declined for weight loss surgery or not approved because it's actually the opposite which is kind of mind-blowing that i'm the one who said you know what i don't know if i'm ready i rolling like they was they was still on the it All right, so the ending is basically Stanley Cup, laundry, bullshit, whatever. So, I'm going to tell you my reasoning. Okay, did she get denied for weight loss surgery? No. I'm going to tell you why. Yes, the dietitian and the therapist approved her for the next step. That's where people is getting lost. Yeah, they approved her for the next step. But she didn't get denied for weight loss surgery because she has not had her first official appointment to the, the surgeon yet. That's the big boss that will approve or deny her. They don't give a damn what that, that dietitian and that therapist said. They, they can't overrule the person that's going to do the, th the surgery on you. She was not ready to hear that denial from the surgeon. She already, she went through this, this Amtrak training through therapy, doing her 12 sessions and everything else. She's not ready to hear that, that, that yes or no from the surgeon. Or I guarantee you, that first appointment she would have with that surgeon, he would not give her no five pound loss um, goal. It, she's over 500. He would have gave her 20 to 30. Sometimes they give you 50 pounds. It depends how big you is. This is a back to now situation. You're only 500. They want to see you lose weight. They're not just going to say, well, you, you did the therapy. Oh, you did the dietitian. And the dietitian talk about, oh, you're going to lose this much a week. I heard they said one pound a week or something. Or one pound every visit. No, that don't make no damn sense. But I guarantee you, she was not ready to see that surgeon. It's too real. Because the goal that she thought that she was going to get from the dietitian, from the, that she was going to receive the same as the surgeon, she was not going to get that. She was going to get that, oh, I'm going to need you to lose that 25 pounds. I'll see you next month. And that's why she postponed it. She's not ready for that. She's not ready to give up her crutches. She's eating healthy now. Yes. But I, like I said, I haven't kept in track with her. So obviously she didn't have a little cheat here and there if she has not lost weight. Because, yeah, you're eating healthy now. But for how long? You have to stay consistent. Especially with these with these doctors. Especially weight loss surgery. That's dangerous. Because my I like my surgeon because he is blunt. But he is relatable. He'll tell me, okay, I want you, well, I wasn't 500 pounds, I was 300. So he was like, lose or maintain or I'll see you next appointment. And I lost. I didn't lose as much because I have a hormone issue, but I was still losing. I didn't gain, got my surgery. Okay. But since she is 500 pounds, he would have gave her a 25 pound weight loss. I can bet money on that. And she wasn't ready for that because she knew she was not going to meet those goals. She knew that. Because she's not truly committed. So instead of her um, putting the um, accountability on herself, she put it on her audience. Well, I was listening to y'all, and that's why I did it. And that's your money. It ain't ours. It's your money. We're not, we're not paying for your surgery, so it doesn't matter what the hell we say. You either get it or you don't. So she's not ready to let go of them crutches. She's not ready to let go of those, those cheats. She's not ready to let go of that food when it's time to cheat. Because I guarantee you, once you have that surgery... You can put it in your mouth and swallow it, but I tell you that my banana stomach has a reset button and would re reject and press that eject button, and I'm throwing all that shit up, all that up, point blank in a period. Okay, so that's my thing. Did she get no? She didn't get denied because she didn't even see the surgeon first. So she cut it off at the pass. She was not ready for that denial because she knew for a fact that her gut she was gonna get denied from that surgeon. Because she was not going to meet his goals and his requirements, his requirements. You can see the dietitian all day and the therapist. The thing about it is, you did not see a bariatrician for them to make all these um, referrals for a pulmonologist, a cardiologist. You wouldn't have to do all that. You wouldn't have to go to your primary to get all this shit done. They do it there. So this is like Red Flag Central. Okay, so that's my take on that. I hope she get to you know continue with the path we don't know and Berlin is a crapshoot but if she postpones it and she c c tries to get it done later and later in a year or something like that they're gonna treat it like back to square one you gotta start over all over again it's a time limit for this stuff so if she wait too long and be like okay i, I want to do it again they're gonna go go back to one it's square one all over that all day baby so i hope she know what she's doing 
that's her life. She's a grown ass woman. So that is the end of that video. If she has any updates, I will chime my, my face into it. But if you have any suggestions for anything you want me to react to, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to check it out. Or you can go to my channel, click the Instagram icon and I'll check it out there. And like I said, any video I react to, the original link will be in the description box. And that is it. And I don't have to tell you what I need to do. I'm put it at the bottom of the screen. And if you stay to the end, thank you for coming around my way. Sada say.